so off out the door. And, and, uh, and, and think about it, was that a bad demo or were they completely wrong? It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I love this self-confidence. You know, if it was well, a song that been that out. And, and uh, Alan, we'd formed in 91 and then we didn't have a record until 94. So we were, we were three and a bit years kind of just playing toilets up, up, up and down the country. Not literally toilets, but um, up and down the country. <laughs> and um, Alan just, he actually missed his train back to Glasgow one night and came in and offered us a record deal on the spot, six albums, which we're about to complete. Oh, I see. So you still have to work that deal out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you, are you still friendly with him or is that, did that yeah, end badly? Yeah, okay. yeah. He's all right. Good guy, Alan. I'll always be eternally respectful to him because he was the one guy that took a chance on us and gave us some money to record that album. And subsequently we had to record it three times and he kept giving us more and more money because he believed in it. So Why did you have to record it three times? Um, well, the first two attempts, apparently, according to other people, weren't particularly good. I thought they were amazing. But, um, <laughs> I think we're seeing a pattern emerging here. Have you ever done anything that was short of being absolutely amazing? Yes. What was that? Um, I don't, don't want to draw attention to it now. Come on, come on, come on, give a little share with us. What have I done that's not been absolutely amazing? There's a, there's, there's a couple of things. Well, a couple of songs, a couple of albums? There's a couple of songs and bits of lyrics. There's, yeah, there's probably... Yeah, do we have to? Yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of albums that maybe well, weren't the best. I think it's good for your soul to get this off your chest now, then you can move on. What? What are you, some f***ing psychic or something? Yes. <laughs> Look, listen. I could be of a great help to you as a father figure. Perhaps <laughs> yeah. guide you through some of the pitfalls that lie ahead. Is that right? I've lived, I've got experience. Have you? Yeah. In what? In everything. <laughs> Apart from shelving. That's quite general, isn't it? Um, I heard a theory, wild as this may seem, that your brother... Do you brother, hear theories or do you hear rumours? I think you can hear both. <laughs> if you've got your ear to the ground. <laughs> uh, what's this I hear though about your brother thinks that uh, being bitten by a wasp may explain some of his behavioural problems? Well, he, he, he kind of claims that his first memory is being bitten by a wasp at two years old. Which, well, which, 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 I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm not willing to pull him up on that, would explain a lot. Yeah. But two years old, you can't remember stuff like that. But if you were bitten by a wasp, then you might be, or stung by a wasp, you might remember, because it'd be, wow, what's that? You look at that, and then you remember a little fuzzy yellow and black. Off I've never been stung by a wasp, bee, hornet, anything like that. Never? No, I've been stung by the tax man, but well, that's about it. <laughs> you haven't lived, my friend. I was stung by a wasp only last week. Really? <laughs> And you are now going to proceed to spit at the audience <laughs> and walk off early. And did it hurt? <laughs> yeah, you know, it did hurt. It was right Where were you time. stung by the swath? Well, in my garden. Where about <laughs> on your anatomy were you stung? In between my big toe and my the next the neighbouring toe. On one of your webs. On my right foot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, you're making light of it. I'm not going to share it with you if you're going to make light. <laughs> I thought you cared about the wasp. Well, let's carry on and talk about how great I am. Right. <laughs> Do you get tired of being told how great you are? I don't, I actually get really embarrassed when people tell me how great I am. I don't mind actually de debating it with a group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> do you have debates well, about... Who would? Yeah. Okay, and so, so do you hang out with other um, well-established, talented musicians who also think they're great? No, because that's bad for the ego, isn't okay. it? No. <laughs> well, you've got Ian Brown here, and many would say that without Ian and the Stone Roses, your little band wouldn't have happened. That's right. It probably wouldn't have happened. Though. Well, it wouldn't have happened. So he's probably greater than you, then? <laughs> Ian, am I right or am I right, Ian? I didn't hear it, sorry. Ah, <laughs> what a diplomat. Good boy. Well, if it, it, what, if it wasn't for the Stone Roses, we, we wouldn't have uh, been doing the kind of music that we do. And they were such an inspiration to a lot of people in Manchester. And Unfortunately, only five people really got anything from it, which was which was the five guys that were in our band at the time. But um, if it wasn't for Ian and John and Rennie and Manny, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the attitude that we had. We wouldn't because the Stone Roses made us believe that we could change the world. They were they were pioneers. They were pioneers. Yeah, they were pioneers. Still, at well, he still is. What I love is in the side. Well, that is, well, it's only the truth, you know, I'm not a blow yeah. smoke up his ass, you know. It's oh. <laughs> <laughs> and don't spoil it, yeah? <laughs> uh, now, what, is this true you got given a Rolls Royce by your record company? I did, yeah. Uh, and you can't drive? I can't drive, no, I, I don't have a driving licence. Didn't stop me from buying four cars, though. Did they give everyone in the band a Rolls Royce? No, they didn't. And it was, 
a story that's actually still marks Liam to this day. Well, I don't know, so I don't blame you. Well, what happened was we we don't we it was uh, night the, the end of '95 and we'd Morning Glory come out. And I think we'd done 12 million. That's 12 million count. <laughs> in a year or something. And uh, well, I, I'd, I'd had this conversation with Alan McGee in passing months before about how it's all about a chocolate brown Rolls Royce, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and we go to this Christmas party, what Crayson are having. And on the way in is this chocolate brown Rolls Royce parked outside a hotel. I didn't think anything of it at the time. And I get in there and Alan gets up and he starts making this speech about blah, 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 blah great guys, blah, 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 you're genius, you're a genius, you're, you two are not, but you two are, you're alright. <laughs> and uh, he gets out this stack of little boxes and he gives, you know, Bonehead his vintage Rolex and he gives Griggs a vintage Rolex and Whitey and then our kid a solid white silver vintage Rolex and uh, so I start there and he says, I'm free. no for you, you know, and I'm going, oh, is that my Rolls Royce parts outside? And he went, who told him? <laughs> and he berated everybody in the room. So he's, he's gone around to everyone going, did you tell him? Did you tell him? I told him not to tell him. At this point, Liam sat there going, Rolex. <laughs> Rolls Royce. <laughs> Rolex. <laughs> Rolls Royce. And I'm going, Rolls <laughs> Royce! Rolex! <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in thinking that for Liam, uh, the thought but process... Well, it's cool, because he can't tell the time and I can't drive, so you could tell You know, the BBC gave me a lovely pen uh, at Christmas to say thank you for... So we would keep sheep in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I do have sheep. <laughs> Uh, you can't drive though, you can't drive. Didn't being uh, given a chocolate brown Rolls Royce encourage you to want to learn to drive? I did, I took about, uh, about ten driving lessons and my driving instructor, God bless her, was like um, Oliver from the buses, but he looked like he'd been pumped up for the, um, for the foot pump. And uh, she actually, she put her hand on my knee one afternoon when I was going round the roundabout. Hello. Yeah, exactly. And then she was driving around a council estate in Slough and she got me to parking between these two cars, unbeknown to me, it was outside her mum's house, and out trots her mum and her sister and the rest of her family. <laughs> and I'm sat in a Nissan Micra, a red one with a big L on the top. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, this is normal, I'm going, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so after that I thought, bollocks that man, I'm not having it. I'll, right. te I'll teach you to drive, if you want. No, I don't know. I don't, cause hey, I've got a bubble car, I'll teach you to drive in the bubble car. I've seen the bubble car. Have you seen the bubble car? I've seen it. You like it? It, it is quite funky. That's the nicest thing you've said all day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I, you know, if it suits you, let's put it that way. Uh, Noel, a pleasure uh, having you on the show. And also, it was. thank you for many fabulous albums and a couple of dodgy ones. Thank you very much. Mr. Noel Gallagher, ladies and gentlemen.